very good day to you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I greet you with the peace and blessings of peace as well and mercy throughout this tip of Africa as we are based here in South Africa to the rest of the world because you can also join us on our World Wide Web. That's hilal.tv and it can stream wherever you are. We suggest you tell your family, friends to do so. Uh, great programming on Hilal TV today. I welcome you to another edition of Life Matters where every life matters. I'm Khawa Solomon and we will bring you an insightful conversation with individuals making a difference in their communities. Don't forget to interact with us as well as we like you to make the show. So tell us what you want to see, what you'd like to hear, um, some improvements, some constructive criticisms, and also suggestions. We're looking forward to the holy month of Ramadan coming on as well. And we'll be introducing a new show called Masao Nisa. That is a Q&A for your Fiki women questions. So please send us through uh, your uh, via our WhatsApp line as well. But more about that show a little bit later. Today, we're privileged to have Kate Bryden, CEO of the Parent Center in Cape Town, joining us as an advocate for parents navigating the complexities of today's world. The Parent Center offers invaluable support and guidance to parents Let's delve into the work the Parent Centre does and support they offer to parents, communities, and the vital role the Parent Centre plays overall. Well, uh, let's uh, now join uh, online. We're, we're now joined online by Kate Bryden uh, from the Parent Centre, the CEO. Thank you so much, Kate, for joining us and welcome to Life Matters. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for having me, Carla. So it's been a busy time for you, back and forth. I hope you are well that side. Um, let's start with the Parent Centre. For those who do not know, can you provide us just a brief overview of the mission and the general goals of the Parent Centre? Yeah, um, the Parent Centre, I mean, we, we offer all sorts of support to, to parents. Um, so we strive to contribute to society um, in which confident, loving, and nonviolent parents um, and caregivers are able to be raised um, and raise well-balanced, confident and resilient children. Um, our mission um, is to um, help parents through positive parenting and through primary intervention um, to facilitate safety and emotional development of children from conception all the way through to early adulthood, um, promote and involve nurturing um, mothers and fathers promote the well-being and self-esteem of parents. Um, we also contribute to the prevention of teenage pregnancy, substance okay. abuse, HIV, AIDS, gender-based violence is a big issue at the moment, mm -hmm. mental illness, um, enhance the children's capacity to resilience and caring, um, competent and creative members of society, um, and encourage the establishment of, obviously, that parent and child relationship um, to be strengthened and nurtured. Um, and we do this through working with parents, caregivers, professionals, practitioners, um, both indirectly and directly with people through um, our services and also collaborating with other organisations. So I know the Parent Centre has been around uh, for quite a bit and of course it uh, serves the community of Cape Town. Uh, how did the Parent Centre come into existence and what motivated its, its establishment? Yeah, well, we're actually excited. We celebrated 40 years last wow, year, um, wow. which was a big achievement for the Parent Centre. Mm -hmm. um, it started um, 40 years ago, actually out of a small project part of um, Cape Town Child Welfare. Mm -hmm. um, and it started on the 2nd of May in 1983. Mm -hmm. um, and they had conducted some research. And what the research found that there was a need for parenting support and parenting training and parenting information. But there was such a lack in the communities. Um, especially to prevent child abuse, neglect, and ab abandonment. So out of that, they started this small project, and then eventually we became our own entity. So some of the services you've mentioned, your focus rather earlier on, you've mentioned um, preventing teenage pregnancies, supporting a parents, so, um, you know, promoting early childhood development and, and nurturing, you know, motherhood and fatherhood. Uh, and it does start from the parents. So how are these um, specific services implemented? What resources does the Parent Centre offer to parents and families? We have a range of um, services and programmes that we do offer, um, you know, really to help parents um, become resilient, and especially in today's society. I mean, there's 
so much out there competing with parents, you know, about social media that's out there. And so we have a range of programs. Um, our first program is our positive parenting training. Um, it comprises of seven sessions that help parents to become positive parents, mm. to be present in a demanding world where parents are pulled in many directions, as I said, to be positive, caring, loving and nurturing, um, not just the soft love, but also pos um, positive discipline, you know, um, it really helps them to set boundaries and, and create limits for their children in such an unknown world and also to tackle the current issues that are being faced by parents and to also for parents to know that they're not perfect and their children are not perfect. So taking that expectation off and giving them the tools to be able to raise the children and not expect them to be perfect. Um, then we have our parent infant program, which is a home visiting program. Um, we work in seven different communities with pregnant mums, um, either from the MOU or from in the community. Um, we go and do clinic talks in the, the MOUs to try and um, find mothers who are in need of help. And we offer psychosocial support. So we, we offer counselling and practical support to the mothers. Um, they often join, you know, anywhere from three months of pregnancy all the way through to the last few days of pregnancy. The, the facilitators, um, they help them through the birthing process as well, deciding how what their birth plan is, and then giving them the practical support up to six to nine months after the child is born. They help the mothers to... You know, things, simple things like we, we might take for granted of how to bath a child or how to breastfeed. The, the counselors and facilitators are there to support them, hold them, also for the emotional support, helping get family involved and to be an extra support network to them. We also offer counselling, um, individual or um, parent counselling with both parents, whether that be for um, co-parenting, um, whether it's for behavioural issues with a child that... The parent is just at a loss. They don't know how to deal with the behaviour um, or they're struggling with the relationship with their child. And we also offer zero to five counselling, which is very specific to parents with that age group and how to deal with the different behaviours and different stages of development in that, that um, season of a child's life. Mm. Um, we also offer our teen parenting program, as you mentioned. This we offer in schools and community to really help the teenagers who are either biological parents or the main caregiver of siblings mm -hmm. and to support them through the challenges of being a teen, a parent and having to go to school. Mm. Um, you know, some of the um, teenagers in the community have dropped out of school. So we encourage them that it's not the end because you, you're now a parent. Mm. You can go back to school. You've got a hope. You've got a future. We really get them to build their self-esteem, break off the stigma of being a teen parent, which is yeah. in the communities, mm. and help them to really just live life and know, have the skills to both parent and be a teenager and also working with their families. You know, often the grandparents are the ones caring for the children. Mm. And so how do they navigate those relationships as well? And then finally, we have our fatherhood program where we work with fathers specifically on a six-week training where we encourage fathers to be involved in families, no matter what the setup, empowering families and changing the status quo of fathers in a family setup. Wow, awesome. So much needed, um, I think, in every community. Let's talk about your team. Do they actually go out? Are you guys based at your offices? Um, and which parts of the communities do you work with? Yeah, well, I mean, obviously with COVID now, we, we work in a hybrid model, which has been... A challenge yet a yes. positive. Um, so our our, um, pair, our positive parenting training mm -hmm. is is operating in the communities. We also offer training at our offices now with our new facilities. We've okay. got a training venue, so they can come and they can um, join one of our courses in Weinberg. But we also go out into communities. We also have a lot of requests from organisations where we go and. They provide the venue and the participants part of their organisation who they feel need parenting support. Our home visiting program with the parent infant is in the parent's home. Obviously, with COVID, there's still some parents who don't feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. And because of COVID, we've been able to now offer telephonic um, services. We also then do group work in the MOU where they can get the practical sessions still face-to-face -face, but in a safer environment where they feel comfortable. Um, and then our counselling, we have offices in Gugaletu, in Grassroots, and also at Weinberg. But again, we also now offer um, 
telephonic or Zoom um, counselling sessions so that those who can't access our facilities can still be reached, can still get the support that they need. Um, fatherhood, again, is in the communities where we feel the need. Um, and then our team parenting program, we're currently working in a few schools, but we're looking to expand now. So one of the exciting things for this year is us looking into getting new schools where we can really bring that support into more communities. And this year, we really are looking at expanding our reach and expanding the communities. Our parent infant programs in seven communities in Health Bay, at Imizema Yetu, we're in Kailicha, Nyanga, Philippi, Mitchell's Plain, Gugaletu, and um, Hanover Park. But we're looking at how can we expand? How can mm. we reach more, more parents? Because obviously, parents all over mm. are in need. So that's the exciting journey we're on for this year of how can we expand and reach more people. Hopefully we will expand on that uh, that specific point after the short break. We also want to know um, about your team, who uh, is exactly housed at the, the parent centre. I know I spoke to the fatherhood um, fatherhood coordinator, a lovely gentleman um, that takes the fatherhood program, you know, head on and involves lots of fathers, speaks to um, previously incarcerated dads, um, you know, dads that, that are that are co-parenting. So I, I know specifically about the fatherhood program and this positive parenting. Love the, the, um, the projects that you guys have put together, Kate, but we need to go and pay the bills when we get back. More with the Parent Centre just after this. Yeah, we have an amazing team. I say we've got a small team, but big at heart. Um, and every staff member that's part of our team plays a significant part um, of what we do. Um, you know, obviously there's myself, who is the CEO. Then we have our management team. Um, that's made up of Jolyn, who's our finance manager. Jonathan, who is our PACES manager. Then we've got Rose, our parent infant manager. Nazuku, who is our team parenting manager. Saida, who oversees office management and is my PA. And then we have Yumna, who is our general manager for one of our pilot programs that we're working with DSD on, um, which is an exciting program to see how we can improve our, our programs working together. Then we have our admin team, which play a very vital part in what we do. Um, you know, we can't do any of our work actually without our admin team. We have Pumza on reception who welcomes everybody. She's the voice you hear on the end of the phone. Then we have Zeba, who is our admin and finance manager, making sure that um, assistant that's making sure everything is in check. Claudia, who makes sure all our stats are kept up to date so that we know how many people are we actually impacting. And then Tabasile, who is our monitoring and evaluation officer, making sure that we keep in current that we're doing the right thing, that our programs are effective. And on Seba, who is our housekeeper. You know, as we've grown, we've got a bigger facility. She has a big job making sure that our facilities are nice for, for the clients that come in. Then we have our parent infant team, and we have Micheline, who is our supervisor, um, Babalwa and Pumi, who are in Imazami Yetu, Debbie and Vivian, who are in Mitchell's Plain, Luludwe, who's in Kailicha, but Desiree out in Health Bay, um, in Hanover Park, sorry. We've got Zunkita in um, Lugaletu and Lucy and Alice in Yanga and, um, and Philippi. Um, then we have our team parenting team, which is made up of Nicolo, Pumla, Elizabeth and Golawa, and they are facilitators who work with the teenagers. And then our PACES team, and um, these staff members are made, um, facilitate training and they also do counseling and that's Carmen. We've got Kasha who, Kashifa, who also does our material development, Berenice, Esther, Yoliswa, and Eliswa, who also do counselling out in our other um, facilities, and then our fatherhood team, which is made up of Shoaib and Timothy. And as I said, they're all passionate about what they do. They carry the heart of a parent. The majority of our staff are actually parents themselves, and so they really come with the expertise and the experience themselves.
from positive parenting program to the teen program as well as the fatherhood program and definitely assisting those to prevent uh, teenage early uh, teenage pregnancy as well the parent center is a community based organization out in the leafy suburbs in uh, Cape Town Western Cape and we're chatting to the CEO Kate Bryden uh, to tell us more about their services and how they can extend um, their help to the to parents in need so Kate welcome back I want to look at uh, just touching on your team quickly, uh, who does the Parent Centre, who are those individuals doing the hard work behind the scenes at the Parent Centre, who are your counsellors, your admin staff, um, your programme coordinators, I'm sure there's many of them. Just take us through uh, your staff complement at the Parent Centre. Yeah, we've got a, um, we're a small but a big organisation, mm -hmm. if I put it that way, big hearts, um, yes. who are, you know, and I really think that everyone at the Parent Centre is really passionate about what they do, whether mm -hmm. it's from management, um, or our admin staff through to our, our councils and the ones that are really on the ground and facing um, the hard work every day. Um, so obviously there's myself who's the CEO and then we have our management team. Um, we have Joel and Crow who is our finance manager, Jonathan Hoffenberg who is our acting programs manager and our PACES manager who oversees the fatherhood um, paces and counselling services. We have our we have Nazuku who is our team parenting manager and Rose who is our parent infant manager. We then have Zaida who is the office manager um, who oversees the admin teams. Mm. So our admin obviously we have our staff on the ground, but admin is a big part of what we do mm. and. You know, we, we have reports to be completed. We have funding to raise. Um, we have to make sure that we're doing research and, and monitoring and evaluation. So we have, obviously, our receptionist who is the one that you'll hear on the phone, mm. Umza, she's amazing. She'll take your calls. She books our appointments. Um, she's the one that really helps us get everything coordinated. Mm. We then have Zebu, who is our admin and finance for, um assistant and you know she's really helping to make sure that we've got things in check and that we're doing what we need to do. We have Claudia who is our um, stats coordinator. Um, we have Tabasile who is our monitoring and evaluation and that's something new that we've started now mm. having our organization making sure that everything is in line. We then also have um, Nonseba who is our um, our um, housekeeper, she's really keeping the facilities. Now we have these amazing facilities and she's got her work cut out for her in our big facilities now mm. and also helping in our Google Ed to office. Um, then we have our, obviously our individual teams that are on the ground doing the work. Um, we have our parent infant team. We've got Micheline, who is one of the supervisors. Um, we then have Babawa and Pumi, who are out in Imizamu Yetu. We have Debbie and Vivian who are in Mitchell's Plain. We have Desiree out in Hanover Park. Then we've got um, we've got Lucy. We've got ooh, Simkita, um, Alice, and Lucy who are all out there doing you know hard work, really um, helping to get get the get the the heart of who we are out into mm. the communities. Mm. Um, then we have our fatherhood program, which is Shuaib, and we have Timothy, and they're going out doing fatherhood. Um, then we have our teen parenting team, which is Nozuku, um, it is, uh, which is the manager. Then we have Nicolo, we have uh, Golalwa, Pumla, and we have um, Elizabeth. Then oh. in our PACES team, and they do a combination of training and of counselling. We have Carmen, who is one of our supervisors. Mm -hmm. We then have Kashifa. We have Berenice. We have Esther. Um, we have um, Yoliswa. Uh, we have Naliswa. Um, so we have a range of staff. Um, mm. Obviously, there's so many staff. I hope I haven't missed any <laughs> um, that, that are doing the work. Um, and, and they really are doing a brilliant job. They're really on the ground. They're really, each person, no matter mm. what their role, has such an important job in the organization yeah. to keep it going for us to reach as many parents as possible. Well, well definitely, you, you need to reach as, uh, as many and be impactful 
as, as much as you can. So every support staff, every individual, no matter how big or small, you know, had, plays a role in an organization like this. How would you say the Parent Center has evolved? I mean, 40 years in the going and um, looking at this year being, you know, a big year to celebrate 40 years. Uh, let's talk about the Parent Center and its expansion and services over the years and how you guys have learned from what is needed uh, and streamlined your programs in that way. Yeah, I mean, the Parent Center is ever evolving. Mm. Um, it started off with just one or two programs that were, you know, with the parent infant program reaching those parents. And then as we've done research and as we've met with um, communities, we've started to see the need for more. Mm. So, I mean, on a daily basis, we have someone like Kashyap who's developing new material to ensure that we're staying relevant and current. Um, so all our programs are constantly evolving, constantly ensuring that um, the latest information on parenting, the latest issues in community. I mean, mm. our staff are the ones in the community. They're facing the issues of violence that's increasing in our communities and how to challenge how parents have to face that challenge of raising a child amongst violence, the issues of COVID and how they evolved. Mm. Um, so all our programs are evidence-based. We've had research. We have um Universities come in and help us do the research to make okay. sure that we are staying relevant. Um, we have parents also providing their feedback mm. to ensure that, you know, issues that they want addressed, we then cover in our group. So we mm. add workshops, we add sessions as we feel, mm. okay, this topic, like, for example, now gender-based violence is such a big topic. And it actually plays a big role in parenting because if we don't address those issues, we don't realize how it affects our parenting. Mm. So we're constantly evolving, as I said, and you know, even moving to hybrid and now being able to offer a different way of reaching parents. Mm -hmm. We're now looking at doing online workshops and having resources and resource mm -hmm. packs that parents can access to then have tools that they can use with their children to connect with their children and face um, deal with certain issues they're facing. Has, has cultural influences ever come up uh, when preparing for these, these workshops? Because... Uh, I must say, we in South Africa and Cape Town specifically has such a rainbow nation. Um, does that impact uh, the resources that you put out, the approach that you have to the different communities, cultural um, you know, influences? It is a big challenge, mm. um, especially, I mean, if you look at our um, positive parenting, you can have parents from every race, every gender, mm. every um, culture, every religion, and and how do we ensure that we we're being inclusive of them mm. and are hearing everybody's voice. And it is, um, you know, our facilitators do a wonderful job that mm. our our parenting, parenting, yes, whilst we might have a cultural difference or a religious difference and belief, parent, the, the core of parenting still remains the same. Yeah. We do offer our programs um, in English and Corsa at the moment, um, we have Afrikaans workers who, like in our parent infant, that we try where we can. If it's a whole group of course, speaking participants, then we will offer it in their language so that they can receive the information and fully understand it. Because we also understand that, you know, having to learn something in another language doesn't always translate. So we're very lucky to have staff um, from different religions, from different cultures, and they bring in... Um, their input into our programs and into our material to ensure that we are relevant to all parents. Let's talk about some of the success stories or impactful moments that highlight the positive influence of the Parent Centre. Yeah, there's so many over mm. the 40 years, obviously, um, at the Parent Centre. I mean, we've impacted over 300,000 parents and caregivers. Mm. Um, and each one that comes through our door is so unique and has their own story to tell and their own challenges. Mm. And that's what I love about the Parent Centre is every day we're hearing a new um, impact story of how we've changed someone's life, how one conversation led to a big change in a family. Mm. Um, there's one father who comes to mind and, you know, I call him one of the ambassadors now of the Parent Centre because he actually came to the Parent Centre during COVID and, you know, he had thought... You know, his family life was great, but during COVID, obviously, his relationship 
um, with his wife broke down, mm. which left him very angry. And what he didn't realize was he was taking that anger out also on his children and on his wife in front of the children. Mm. And he, he didn't realize the impact on his family. So he attended one program. He then came back for counseling. A year later, came back for another program, then attended another program. And, you know, just last year, he came to the parent center with his son and his story is just so real to me, how you could just see the relationship now with his son, mm. the skills. He talks about how the skills that we taught him, um, that he didn't even realize that his anger was affecting his children and his relationship with his children. He didn't realize that whilst it was aimed at his wife, that it actually was impacting the children. Yeah. So he was equipped to be able to now talk with his children and talk and, and protect them in what was going on in their relationship. And you could just see the son beaming, so proud of his father when he when they came to the parent center, and he was beaming as this father who who now is involved in his children's life, mm -hmm. and he's loving them, and he's nurturing them, and ensuring that they raise up resilient and strong mm -hmm. and protected and nurtured. Um, our mothers in the parent infant program, the impact that they talk about about how they were empowered. You know, some of these parents come and they're told something by the clinic and they just take it as that's all I have to do. I have to listen. And mm. we empower the mothers to go and to go back to the clinic and, and ask questions and say, but why did you tell me I need to do this? Yeah. What is the problem? They, you know, some of these mums are feeling ashamed in their communities and they're able to connect with their families, get support around them mm. so that the the children when they're born can be supported. So mm. there's so many to to tell. Okay, um, yeah. <laughs> just, you know, I mean, these are li literally one or two out yeah. of thousands of, of but, impact but stories that are, we could tell. But they are amazing stories and I want to latch onto the father story specifically after the break. We'll come back and talk more with the parents and the impact they have on communities, individuals and households households and parents and uh, we delve more into the challenges parents might be facing all year on Life Matters. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back. A very good day to you. Asalaamu Alaikum. We're chatting to the CEO of the Parent Centre based out in Weinberg, Cape Town in the Western Cape, serving the community there, but also branching out online. So watch that space for the Parent Centre. So as Kate said earlier on, 40 years, and I think this is the 41st year, serving over 300,000 parents in that time, really making an impact in community households and individuals as parents. So Kate, just before the break, um, some heartwarming stories you chatted about. What would you say are some of uh, the challenges parents might be facing um, in your experience? Just let's look at the, the common challenges that, that parents are currently facing. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of challenges and mm. times really have changed. Um, you know, safety is, is at the forefront. Yeah. Um, if, if I think of some of the, the mothers that we've spoken to in the communities, mm. and some of them are scared to even leave their front door. And, you know, some of the pregnant moms who are going, I'm, I'm giving birth to a child into this community. Mm. You know, how am I going to raise a child when there's gunshots um, outside my door? When, how are they going to walk to school? How am I going to, you know, face those challenges? Um, there's also, you know, since COVID, the, the challenge of finance, you know, so many people lost their job. Um, we all know, it, I mean, worldwide, it, it was an economic crisis and parents still are, are struggling to get back on their feet. I mean, prices are going up and people are behind. And so, you know, parents are struggling with how do I raise my child and raise them to be healthy, to be able to feed my child? How do I, but also when they're going to school and their friends have other things and how do I teach them that, you know, and not give them the burden of finances, but yet um, help them to understand that we may not have. Um, it's a real challenge for many of our parents. You know, fathers talk about how, you know, a lot of times they have disconnected from their children because they feel like they can't provide and they should be the provider. So, they just shut down and they just disconnect instead of realizing that the biggest thing they can give a child is love and mm. time and 
you know, being there for them. It doesn't have to be money. Um, and so, um, you know, other challenges such as social media. Yeah. I mean, we are competing with children who are more technological savvy than we yeah. are. <laughs> um, you know, children who are already on phones and um, they go to school and they're on computers and they're dealing with friends and talking to friends, which is out of our control many times mm. for parents. Parents don't know how to deal with um, what information children are receiving on their phones. How do I navigate social media? How do I navigate just peer chats on the phone? Um, you know, cyberbullying is big. How do I help my child deal with these issues? Um, you know, they're just some of the big issues that are really coming out at the moment um, of how to deal with children, especially in South Africa. And I think the the biggest one is the violence and especially gender-based violence. Mm. It's Parents don't realize that it's impacted them and it actually then it impacts how they're raising their children and their fear actually is being put into their children. So we've now developed more um, sessions to deal first with gender-based violence mm. so that I can deal with my own loss and grief, my own pain, my own trauma, so that I can then go, oh, that's actually affected how I love my child or how I make decisions or how I discipline my child. And so many parents uh, don't realize, and many parents say to us in the training, um, we just had a father recently say to us that, you know, I didn't even realize that other people have trauma. I mm. thought I was the only one. Mm. I didn't know that everybody has trauma. So I didn't want to talk about it because I thought I was the only one. And so we realized that in the training, as we talk about these issues, many parents think they're the only ones with concerns. And yeah. that's what's so exciting, that mm. they can share stories and realize they're not alone and then connect together and, and raise the children together and understand that you're never alone. Yeah. Let's talk. Let's talk about these issues. Very true, very true. And, and when you say parents come together, often there's this fear that, you know, oh, no, you know, this is hogwash, this counselling, this, you know, our parents did it, so we'll just follow that trend. But we, 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 we have to face that times has changed. And in recent years, you know, the landscape of parenting has changed. I want to look at that um, specifically. And when you talk about, uh, you know, assisting parents, it sounds like it's a journey as well. Let's, let's look at one specific journey. I mean, there, I mean, I can take one example from teen parenting, but I'm going to look at, you know, the violence, for instance, because it's a big thing in, in South Africa. What if uh, a couple or even the mom, you know, approaches the, the parent centre? What would, would be the ideal uh, approach from the parent centre and the journey that the mother and the parent centre would follow together um, with this mom approaching the parent centre to say, listen, I have, um, I've been experiencing gender-based violence, or I know someone that does. What would be the initial, um, you know, support given by the parents end, and what journey would that individual follow within your um, organization? Yeah, we're really um, always willing to help anybody that walks in our door. Um, if they're a parent, then we will refer them um, to our counselors to make a counseling appointment. They can do an initial assessment to see whether they need counseling or whether they could attend our parenting training. Um, if they are reporting um, a case of gender-based violence or about themselves and they're not there for parenting uh, per se, we partner with a lot of organisations and collaborate with a lot of organisations. So our staff are always willing to come and support. We can refer them onto another organisation and we will hold the space with them until we know that the other organization has come to support them through um, the assistance that they're needing, whether it's more in-depth counseling that's outside our scope of work and our knowledge. But we will always help everyone that walks through our doors and direct them in the right direction. So, so Kate, I want to go to that story you mentioned to me earlier on with the, with the dad and how he um, changed through the positive support that he got from the parent centre. Take us through a journey like that, because it's not often that fathers are coming forward. You guys have a brilliant fatherhood program that allows you know dads to reach out and feel comfortable and talk about trauma and realise that, that, like you said, everybody does suffer from it. I want to just get a personal approach being at the parent centre, if I happen to call them and say, I'd like to join your parenting program, uh, your fatherhood program specifically, like this dad maybe did, and then he got 
connected to maybe a counselor because he needed specific um, requirements. What would be his process or journey with the parent centre? Yeah, I mean, the moment um, anybody contacts the parent centre, we connect them with the right program and one of our staff members will contact them. Um, for the fatherhood program in particular, um, you know, Shuaib or Timothy will then contact them and find out what area they're staying in. Mm. Do we have a group in their area? Where can we, you know, get them connected into a group? Um, and then they walk that journey. Um, the exciting thing about the parent centre is that we all work together. We're not working individual programs that don't connect. So mm. as the program is going, our staff are looking and hearing what the, the parents are saying. So hearing a father talking about his issues of trauma or mm. his issues of anger and, and recognising that, okay, maybe he needs extra help. Mm. Um, so our staff will always then look at, can we refer them to one of our other programs, whether it's counselling or our, then our positive parenting training. Okay. In this case, um, this father in particular actually came back himself. Mm. He did the fatherhood course and he, you know, continued on his journey and then he recognised that actually I need a little bit more help. Mm. I, I need to now deal with this issue. I mean, what we find is a lot of clients come back later. So yeah. they've come when their child was, you know, a toddler or a, a small child and now their child's a teenager. Now mm. that's a whole different issue. That's a whole different way to parent and put mm. in boundaries. And so they come back, whether it's to the training or for counselling for specific issues um, in that stage of the child's development. So mm. it's exciting for us when parents also feel that the parent centre was a safe space and the parent centre gave them something that actually now I can go back again. And we mm. see that with a lot of our clients and we will always welcome them back and, you know, they can come to the training again and receive information with a new lens because yeah. now they're looking at their child at a different age. Mm. We even have grandparents that come back and now their children are adults and they're coming on how can I support the, their child now parent or how can wow. I parent their grandchild because the grandchild's in my care. So we, they can, they'll either be referred from one of our workers or they can actually come back themselves, which we find a lot of the times. Well, it sounds like the Parent Centre is an institution uh, for families and communities because if the grandparents that had uh, received counselling there is referring their children and their children's children, uh, well done, guys. Uh, a pat on the back to you and your team, Kate. And I also have to say when last when I was in Cape Town, I said I'm, I'm interviewing the Parent Centre, very exciting, and, the, and this dad actually said, Wow, that actually is, I remember the parents entered distinctly because when I was going through divorce, they transitioned me, my ex-wife, my, my children assisted us in that transition of that divorce. So um, really good uh, support that, 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 I, that I've heard thus far from the Parent Centre, and it does sound like it's there for the community. Uh, Kate, we're going to take a quick break. When I come back, I want to latch on to, you know, how parenting has changed in the recent years. You have spoke about, you know, growing with the times and the different influences, the rise of technology, social media, and the factors, is, the factors rather that influence and challenges parents um, possibly encounter. A little bit of uh, advice there from your side. We chat more with the Parent Centre CEO, Kate, just after the short break. Stay with us. Welcome back. As we round up our conversation with CEO of the Parent Centre out in the Western Cape and looking at the in enormous tasks that they have on their hands with the various challenges that they face within the Western Cape, one-on-one -on -one sessions that they do have with parent teens, uh, preventing teenage pregnancies, uh, divorced parents, co-parenting, fatherhood program, the infant uh, child uh, uh, mother and infant child program, um, and various positive parenting programs that they do host. They actually branching out to the greater community in South Africa and the world possibly. So stay tuned for that and we're excited. So we'll make, we're going to be making a very exciting announcement at the end of the show. So please do stay tuned to that as well. So Katie, if I can get back to you and some of the po positive um, advices, or at least um, stories that we've heard come from the Parent Centre, turning, you know, 40 has been, you know, a real uh, pat on the back 
and uh, growing with the times is something that you had to also, you mentioned car chef that also does, you know, keep up with the various uh, manuals and stuff and what's, what, what needs to happen within the parenting sector. We, we, we understand that the rise of technology and social media um, has impacted parenting. Let's talk about the influences and how that those factors influence and challenges parents could possibly encounter and how maybe the parent center has assisted uh, parents in, you know, in the various ways they possibly uh, change the uh, programs to assist parents. Let's, let's just venture in that because that's a big thing at the moment. Yeah, social media is, is big mm. <laughs> and it affects parents, it affects children um, and so it's it's really something that we've had to also take into consideration and it comes up a lot in, in sessions of counselling or in the parenting training, um, just the complexities of it. I mean, there's so much advice out there that um, parents can get and you don't know what do I believe, what don't I. I mean, as a parent myself, there's often times that you, you're looking for advice and help on a situation and you just there's just too much out there and, and it's, it's knowing where to look um, and... That's one exciting thing for the parent center that, you know, as an established name and with the knowledge that we have, we, you know, we, we're putting also our social media out there so that parents know that, oh, this is a trusted organization where mm. we can go and we can get advice and we can get tips and we can get skills that we need. Um, and then in our training, you know, helping parents to navigate social media, helping talk about the issues that come up about bullying about what children might see on social media mm. and how to have those conversations with their child and how to have conversations with each other about um, the impacts of social media because it often can even impact how we parent, um, how we see other parents on social media. And that's such a, it, it's such a relevant topic that we have to be discussing about how even our self-esteem built by watching another parent can impact how we parent. Mm. So all these topics are things that we talk about within our training, in our counselling, and, um, yeah, we just hear parents time after time how they need to know where to go to get help. I want to now latch on to any collaborations that the Parent Centre might have, the, any centres, schools, community organisations, or other entities to perhaps enhance parental support. Yeah, we work with, um, we're part of the SAPA network, which is the mm -hmm. South African um, Positive Parenting Initiative Network. And um, that's part of a whole lot of organisations that work in the parenting space or mm -hmm. with children um, and um, in, with parents. So we work with all those organisations throughout um, South Africa. So even if a parent contacts us from another um, province, then we can refer them on Whereas outside our scope of work, we can refer them on, especially, you know, for, for the child to also get help. So we can refer the child to the organisations that we, we can partner with that are, that, that are in Cape Town or in the greater South Africa. Mm. Um, so we, we try to really collaborate. We Part of that network, we, we're looking at legislation. We're looking at how can we influence um, what's out there for parenting in terms of, you know, corporal punishment, those mm. sort of things. So we really have a wide net network of organisations that we work with and partner with to ensure that parents all over South Africa can get the support that they need. So you've mentioned COVID, uh, the pandemic earlier in our conversation. Have you observed any possibly long-term effects of the pandemic on, the, on parenting specifically and uh, family dynamics in any way? Yeah, definitely. I think it, it changed how everybody thinks mm. um, and it impacted everybody, whether you're affected health-wise or financially um, or emotionally and mental health issues. And mental health issues are still um, continuing from the impact of COVID. Mm. And that's one of the biggest issues that we see. And whether that's because it's a father who no longer can provide for his family or even a mother who can no longer provide for her family and her children, um, it's, you know, the loss of job which, or the loss of connection with family, the loss and grief of mm. people that they lost, whether it was family members or friends, um, the loss of children even. Um, you know, I think the whole world is still having to carry the weight of COVID and how it affected us. A lot of people are still isolated because of it. 
Mm. Um, we still have parents who don't want to come to the center because they're worried about um, getting sick. They don't want our staff to come to their homes. Um, so we're having to tackle all of those issues. And that's why we've, we've moved towards continuing hybrid because okay. we felt that just because COVID is, you know, for some people out of sight, out of mind, for some people it's still very real. But mm. like I said, I mean, there's still the financial impact. There's still the mental health impact that we have to support each other in and recognize that it's not over for many people. Sure. That's scary, eh? Um, any future initiatives and goals? Are there any upcoming initiatives or projects that the Parents Centre is excited about implementing in the near future? Yeah, we're really excited for 2024. I mean, we had our first staff meeting this week and, and the staff are really passionate about the year. I mean, we we have opportunities this year to, to look at going nationally and internationally. We are also busy with how can we reach parents through social media like we were talking about now. Mm. So how do we um, get more tips out there, more workshops online that people can access in their own time, in their own space um, where, um, to reach their need? You know, having different workshops on different topics or different stages of development. We're also looking at resource packs that, you know, parents can take and it's mm. real tools that they can work to, how do I talk to my child about this issue? How do I address this issue with my child? How do I start these conversations? So looking at resources, you know, worksheets that the parents can use and they can download and they can access in their homes just to help guide conversations. Because there's often times that parents don't necessarily want to come to a training or don't feel they need counselling. Um, you know, counselling has such a stigma still about it. Mm. But they just want help or they just want a way to engage. So we as the Parent Centre are now looking at how can we expand our resources beyond a program or counselling, but also resources and things online that parents can access in their own space and time. So looking at um, addressing emerging challenges, because they arise all the time, and at the moment I know, as you said, you, the, the address to uh, look at violence in the community, something, you know, on the top of your list. But how do you stay relevant in the years to come as a par as the Parent Centre? Yeah, we are always continuing to monitor and evaluate our programs. Mm -hmm. We're always, I mean, we always evaluate our um, participants and clients and ask them, you know, is there topics that they feel that we miss that we need to add? But on top of that, we have a monitoring and evaluation officer who okay. also evaluates our programs to make sure we're staying contemporary, making sure we're staying relevant, um, ways that we can reach parents better, and then also researchers. So we collaborate with universities such as UCT, Knowledge Co-op, um, where students or academics can come and they do research topics for us, longitudinal studies to see mm. the impact, to make sure are we having just a short-term impact or is it long-term? Um, doing research about what are the struggles of parents, um, doing questionnaires out um, in the communities to ask them what topics would you want to hear if we did a workshop online. Yeah. So we're always in trying to do what we can to ensure that we stay relevant um, and we're thankful that we have a lot of people who partner with us to help us do that research to ensure that our work is evidence-based and relevant. We have to wrap up, Kate. Thank you so much for your time. I'm very excited now to do the official announcement that we as uh, the Life Matters team would like to parent, Annie Lalti, would like to parent with the Parents End in the near future. We'll keep our listeners um, uh, just a little bit, um, you know, <laughs> excited about that. Um, so um, we're really looking forward to working with the P Parents Centre in the future. But uh, Kate, give us your last words and any um, contact details and, and people that would like to reach out to the Parent Centre. Yeah, I just want to encourage any parents out there, whether you're a parent, caregiver, no matter what your age, your background, your family situation, the Parent Centre is here to help. Mm -hmm. um, you know, counselling is not something that's scary and, and unknown. You know, it's there so that we can help guide and give advice. We've got programs that we can come alongside you and just support you in your parenting journey to see you flourish in it. So people can go to our website, theparentcentre.org.za. They can um, contact the Parent Centre um, via ours. Uh, we've got a WhatsApp number. We've got a phone number. 
Our email addresses are there on our website. They can go check it out, contact us, and we will point them in the right direction for which program that we can we can help them with. Kate Bryden, thank you so much for chatting to us. We're definitely going to be talking in the near future with some exciting programs. We will keep our, keep our viewers in suspense for that as well. But it's been a pleasure. Do enjoy the rest of your day and goodbye. Thank you so much. Thank you for tuning into Life Matters. We had the pleasure of speaking with Kate Bryden, CEO of the Parent Centre, whose organisation empowers parents through challenging times with compassion and expertise. Remember, support is, avail is available and organisations like the Parent Centre are there to help you. Join us next time for more inspiring conversations and always mindful wellness and nurturing resilience. Until then, take care. May the peace and the blessings be upon you all. Wassalamu alaikum and goodbye.